Hello everybody, Noah here with Learn Meta Analysis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to export your references from Zotero, our citation management system, and create a coding form that is going to help us. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to show you how to do screening with a coding form, kind of the quote-unquote old-fashioned way, uh, using Microsoft Excel, and then I'll also show you a version uh, where we export and we use a software called AS Review, and that kind of workflow is generally pretty similar for a lot of the automated, I shouldn't say automated systems because they're not automated systems, a lot of the technology enhanced systems that are out there. So if you want to use Covidence or something like that, it's going to be similar or we're going to simply export a file and then import it into that software. But for now, we're going to pretend like we want to use uh, either Excel or Google Sheets or numbers on a Mac, something like that to do our screening kind of the old fashioned way. So all we have to do from Zotero, we're here in our library, we've already removed our duplicates. All we need to do is go to File, Export Library. We're going to choose our format. So what do we want? Well, what we actually want is a .csv. Okay, and the reason is because we're going to translate this into a spreadsheet and .csv works really well for that. We don't have any notes in the system, so we're not going to use that. So from there, it asked me where I want to save it, and I'm going to save it just in my demo folder for now. It doesn't really matter where you save it as long as you pay attention. Um, so we need to name our file. Uh, I'm just going to call this raw export because that's what I typically call my, um, my files as raw export duplicates removed. And then I'm going to hit save. That's it. We're done, right? That's all we had to do. So now let's check out what that actually looks like in Excel. So if you give me one second here, I'm going to open that file. All right. And you can see we have a lot of information here, right? A lot of stuff. The reality is we don't need all of this. Um, all we really need are the, or I should say, um, what I'm going to show you is how I prefer to set this up. There's a million different ways you could structure this. I prefer to simplify this down quite a bit. So here's what I do. This one called key, this is useless to me so I delete it. Ah, actually, before I do that, what I should do is do File, Save As, and then Browse and find a place that I want to save it. And I am going to call this uh, coding form. I'm going to call it Phase 1 coding form. And I'm also going to change it from a CSV to an Excel workbook. And the reason is because some of the things that we're going to do here, once we uh, start working with this a little bit more, CSVs will kind of collapse it and not retain all the formatting super well. So I like to make it an Excel workbook just for simplicity. Okay, so here we are. Um, I like to keep the item type because it helps me when I try and locate the study later. Uh, publication year, same thing, I like to keep that. Authors, I like to keep that. Title, super important. So I'm gonna make this broader and the reason is because I'm going to reference this later. Now, all of this other stuff here that you can see, uh, publication, ISBN, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to cut those and I am just going to paste them to the left of publication type, or I'm sorry, publication year, so that they're out of the way. Basically, what I'm trying to do here is I wanna have author, title, and abstract next to each other, and I actually don't want anything else over here to the right. So now when I'm looking at this, what else do I have here? I have date, date added, pages, blah, 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 number volume. None of this stuff here is important to me, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. I don't need that for this step. And all this information is still saved in Zotero, so if I need any of this later, I, I know I can always find it again. All of this stuff, again, I don't need any of this, so I just go to where it ends and I delete it. Okay, so now you can see we have our abstract and I'm gonna make this wider. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I like to have my coding form set up when I do it in Excel. So I like to have it structured just like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to title and I'm first going to do format cells, alignment, I'm gonna wrap the text so I can see the whole title at once. Then I'm gonna to go to the abstract note and I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, so now you can see that we have each study on a line. Now what I like to do is put here phase one coding. Now what I do with phase one coding is I keep in mind that my inclusion criteria, right? And so we had a video we talked about setting up inclusion and exclusion criteria. So typically what we're doing in this first stage is we are looking at the titles and the abstracts and saying to ourselves, does this appear to meet our inclusion criteria? Yes or no? If it does, I put a one. If it doesn't, I put a zero. The reason is because once we're done coding every single study in here, 
I like to use this column and I just sort it by ones or zeros. The other thing is it's much easier to hit one or zero than it is to type something in. Part of the reason is because as you start reviewing these, you'll be able to review them pretty quickly. And so being able to go one, zero, one, something like that is, is much more efficient, at least for me, than typing in uh, retain or key for yes or no or anything like that. So what we're going to do here, again, as I said, is we'll simply look at our title and we'll look at our abstract. If it appears to meet the inclusion criteria, I keep it. If I don't know, I keep it. The only reason I exclude it is if, if I am pretty positive that it does not meet our inclusion criteria. And so you will go, most likely as you're going through this run into cases where you're like, mm, I'm not really sure based on the abstract. If you're not really sure, just keep it because the next stage is our full text screening. And in that full text screening, you'll find out really quickly, is this something that meets your inclusion criteria or not? So when in doubt, retain it through this stage so that way you have it to look at later. So. That said, that's pretty much all I have about how to build a database here. We'll have a separate video on how to get this type of information into AS Review or some other software platform like that because they all work relatively similarly. So that said, thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video.